An out update on a case that baffled investigators for weeks. A young couple, their baby daughter, and family dog all found dead on a hiking trail in California. August 14th, 2021. It began like any other Saturday for the Garish family. John Garish, his wife Ellen Chung, their one-year-old daughter Miju, and their family dog Oski decided to go for a hike. The couple had recently moved from bustling San Francisco to Mariposa, California to spend more time in nature and out of the city. However, what was supposed to be a tranquil family outing in the Sierra National Forest took a grim turn. Was the Garish family the victims of a rare natural phenomenon? Did they unknowingly consume something toxic? Or was there a darker explanation lurking in the shadows of the forest? John, originally from England, met Ellen Chung shortly after moving to San Francisco. He was a software engineer, and at the time, she was a yoga instructor. As he settled in, he fell in love with Ellen and her dog, Oski. They were married in 2019. After the pandemic in 2020, the couple decided that they needed to move their growing family out of the city. Ellen and John wanted to raise their daughter, Miju, in a quiet, slow-paced environment. The family left for their hiking trip on Sunday morning by Monday. August 16th, their family and friends knew something wasn't right. Alarm bells began to ring. Their nanny arrived at their home to find no one there, and John's co-workers expressed concern because he hadn't shown up for work, which was unlike him. Ellen Chung also hadn't shown up for work. The nanny reported the family missing when she still hadn't heard from them a few hours later, and a search began around 11 p.m. The family car was found parked at the entrance to the Heights Cove Trail Road, but with each passing hour, the family's loved ones began to get the feeling that something had gone terribly wrong. John, Ellen, Miju, and Oski were found dead on Tuesday, August 17th. John's lifeless body was seated with little Miju and Oski near him. However, Ellen was found a ways away from them up on a hill. The Mariposa County Sheriff said that the area where their bodies were found didn't indicate a clear picture of what had caused their deaths. Authorities spent the next month ruling out causes of death. The family and their dog did not have any signs of physical wounds or trauma, so authorities went ahead and ruled out the use of a gun or another deadly weapon. Toxicology reports also showed no evidence of chemical exposure or ingestion of poisons. Some thought, perhaps, the family had accidentally breathed in toxic fumes from a nearby mine, but it was confirmed to have been too far away to have been a possible cause of death. Authorities ended up ruling out over six other causes of death, including a lightning strike, suicide, carbon monoxide poisoning, and cyanide. On August 19th, the California State Water Resources Control Board urged the public to stay away from algae and scum in the water near the South Fork in the Merced River in the Sierra National Forest. Teams in hazmat suits began to explore the area. On Sunday, August 29th, the Sierra National Forest closed the Merced River Recreation Site and its hiking trails and rivers to the public. The area was treated as a hazmat site since the situation continued to baffle investigators. September brought with it a chill not just from the changing seasons, but also from a startling new theory. In certain parts of the Sierra National Forest, tests had confirmed the presence of toxic algae blooms. Water samples from several spots along the river tested positive for anatoxin A, a type of toxin created naturally by blue-green algae. This toxin, if ingested, could have deadly consequences. Some of the side effects of consuming water contaminated with this type of toxic algae are burning and tingling, numbness, drowsiness, incoherent speech, and respiratory paralysis leading to death. Word began to spread that perhaps the Garish family met their fate because of the toxic algae. The family had been found with very little water left in the container that they had brought with them. Could it be that in their desperation for hydration, they drank from a contaminated water source? But the local location where their bodies were discovered was upriver from the confirmed algae-infested zones. This raised doubts among many that had been following along in the case. If the family had consumed contaminated water, wouldn't they have had to venture into the dangerous zones downstream first? The toxic algae theory, like the ones before it, was ultimately ruled out. Six scientific laboratories worked together to test water samples all along the route that the Garish family took. They confirmed that none of the areas they visited contained contaminated water. This left the community, investigators, and the world at large grappling with the question, what really happened to the Garish family on that fateful day? In October, a somber revelation emerged. Two months after the discovery of their lifeless bodies, the official cause of death for the Garish family was announced by the Mariposa County Sheriff's Office. The determination was that the family died of overheating and probable dehydration. The eight-year-old family dog, Oski, also succumbed to a heat-related demise. Sheriff Jeremy Breeze with a heavy heart addressed the media.
As of Friday, October 15th, we have determined the official cause of death and our pathologist has complete, completed his report based on the autopsy, our investigation, and a multitude of toxicology results. The cause of death for Jonathan Garish, Ellen Chung, Aurelia Miju Chung Garish, has been determined as hyperthermia and probable dehydration. Further insights from the investigation were shared on the Mariposa County Sheriff's Office Facebook page. Thanks to the FBI's computer and phone forensic team, data from Jonathan Garish's phone painted a harrowing timeline of the family's final hours. The Garish family's hike seemed to start as any would, with the moments of joy captured in snapshots. The family took photos together just yards away from the entrance of the trailhead. At this point, the temperature was around 74 to 76 degrees Fahrenheit. They took on the initial two-mile hike down the Heights Cove Road Trail. When they finished, they took more photos by the river, but as the day progressed, the temperature spiked and their mood darkened. The temperature had grown to 99 degrees Fahrenheit. They continued along a new trail that follows the South Fork of the Merced River. This trail was another two miles long. By the time they reached the Savage Lundy Trail, the temperature had reached 103 degrees Fahrenheit. John and Ellen knew they were in trouble. They had run out of water, and the area that they were in provided no shade from the blistering sun. A wildfire had wiped out all of the nearby trees three years before. At 11.56 a.m., a desperate text was sent, though it was never delivered due to the lack of cell service. Can you help us? Heading back to Heights Cove Trail. No water. Overheating with baby. The next hour was filled with multiple calls that never connected. The family continued down the trail. The air temperature had continued to climb up to 109 degrees Fahrenheit. According to experts, due to the lack of shade in the area, ground temperatures were likely even higher. Their bodies were found about 1.6 miles away from their car. Ellen's body was found further down the trail than John, Miju, and Oski because it seemed that she had tried to go get help on her own. Conversations about hiking safety have cropped up in the wake of this tragedy. Authorities and seasoned hikers urge the public to take proper safety measures when trying out new trails. Always research the trail you're planning to hike. Let someone know when you leave and where you're going to be. And always bring water, more than you think you need. However, this advice didn't stop a curious tourist from hiking along the exact same route that the Garish family took in order to try to figure out what really had happened to them. A year after the family's tragic demise, the tourist got himself lost on the same trails and had to be rescued by local authorities. He attempted to call 911 multiple times, but the lack of phone signal made this impossible. Thankfully, authorities found him alive and he was treated for minor injuries. Authorities continue to remind hikers to be mindful when hiking and to not take on trails that are more difficult than your current experience level. After finally getting some answers, families of John and Ellen issued a joint statement. Our hearts will never forget the beautiful lives of Jonathan, Ellen, Miju, and of course, Oski. They will remain with us wherever we go and whatever we do. In the future, when we sit beneath the trees listening to the wind soughing through the branches, we will hear them and we will remember them. The story of the Garish family serves as a sobering reminder of the unpredictability of nature. As we step outside, let's ensure we're not just captivated by the beauty around us, but also attuned to the potential dangers. In memory of John, Ellen, Miju, and Oski, may we all tread with caution and respect for the world we explore. And with that, we have come to the end of this video. Tell us your thoughts down below and don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on our latest videos.